This conference will now be recorded. Good afternoon. Welcome to LAT's Weekly Market Insights. This week, reasonably quiet on the data front. Of course, the ongoing um, war in Ukraine is escalating. There's been talks of peace, there's been talks of resolution, but I think the main thing to stay focused on is actually what's happening on the ground, and that is, of course, the continuation of the, uh, of, of, of the shelling and bombing of Ukraine's major cities, unfortunately. Uh, Data-wise this week, all eyes were on um, this Friday, 1.30 today, non-farm payrolls out of the US, uh, biggest employment data uh, you could get in the macroeconomic calendar, only really eclipsed by interest rates and inflation. So, a uh, raft of data out today on the Friday. What you could do on these sorts of calendars, very, very simple, uh, is to unhighlight the minor data. It will clean things up a little bit, and this is what we're left with today. Of course, here at the 1.30, um, time was a non-farm employment change. I had a few bits of data out the US, average hourly earnings and unemployment rate, which is obviously very, very important also. But the main data here to keep a focus on was a non-farm employment change. If you're not too sure what that is, if you're if you're new, if you're a beginner, <clears throat> very, very important that you learn. And so click on the envelope here and it will open. And if it opens up, you can then see something like this. And what's very, very simple to see is the relevance of it. Thank you. Take reverence of it. Why traders care? Uh, job creation, of course, are uh, really, really important in terms of consumer spending and therefore economic activity generally. So if more jobs are created, um, essentially the economy is doing better. Very, very simple. So less than the expected, less than the forecast, which is always in the middle here, the forecast, anything less than that, you'd see um, negative impact on all things American, really. Anything above that, positive. <clears throat> it's non-farm employment change are taking away seasonal workers, essentially, um, I don't know wherever you are in the world, but whenever it's harvest time on a farm, there are more hands on, on deck and therefore it skews the data. So the data in terms of employment change negates um, the agricultural um, hires, essentially. Okay, so we'll have a look at the charts and see how it was traded. Uh, straddling it would be the main way. If you're in a position already, you might look to manage a position if you're already in something. So take some profit, maybe close some of the position out, uh, tighten a stop loss, or maybe close the whole position out completely. But if you're looking to trade it to get into something, we don't ever enter the market before the data. The idea, be, I, reason being, it will turn it into somewhat of a gamble. So the idea is place your orders, find some levels, and then when the data comes out, that should be the catalyst, the driver that takes you through your entry and then <clears throat> hopefully onto your target. We'll have a look at some straddles we looked at um, at midday today during one of our um, three-a-day LAT webinars, <clears throat> and then we'll see how they've uh, how they've fared. Oh. So the one that we looked at, the main one we looked at was on the indices. Of course, we we're looking at lots of dollar pairs, um, dollar yen long, maybe euro dollar short, these kind of things, um, or the other way around, of course. But we also look to straddle. The, uh, the US indices. And here we have the S&P, uh, the 500 top companies in the US as a whole. That's the index. Um, this red line signifies the data release. Okay, so we were charting it somewhat before that. So somewhere around here. And all we were looking to do was actually charted in the 15 minute time frame. So something like that is what we charted it in. And all we were looking to do at this stage was to maybe target something like that if we went long, um, target something like that if we went short, and then to identify entries, we went down to the five minute here, and we had this level as a level of support by which to go through, go short through, so down here, and then this little high as a level of resistance to go long through, should it be positive. The data, as you can clearly see, did come out negative. Okay, 431, um, which is of course less than the 492 expected. It was quite interesting because we were looking at this um, during our session, as I said. And if you look at this little button here, you can see all the previous actual data as compared to the forecast. And this happens on the first Friday of every month for the previous month, essentially. <clears throat> and you can see here, we did notice a little pattern actually. And it was, there seemed to be two reds, two greens, i.e. it was above twice below the estimate, twice above, twice below, once above, but then twice 
below twice above. So we made just a bit of an educated estimate there and one of the students during the webinar actually identified that um, it's been seven years since we had three consecutive greens or three consecutive reds. Therefore we estimated that it was going to come under and it actually did. It actually stuck to that and we did have a miss. Here you can clearly see. So we're looking then of course then for a short. As we get the breakout the short um, the short option is triggered. If you had a long order in place like this, some platforms give you an OCO one cancels other, which means it will automatically disappear if the short order was entered, but sometimes you might just have to cancel it yourself. So if you had an order in, you just kill the order, we get entered short, and then there's our target down the bottom. Um, it does seem like there's a little bit of support around about this region here, as you can clearly see. Yep, it's finding a bit of support around that region. Going to be completely up to you if you want to decide right now, you know what, I'll take the profit, thank you. That would be a 1.7 to 1 if you exited the trade now, because of whatever you're risking up the top here, let's say it's 1%, you then bank 1.7%. If you want to hold it through that support level, it does seem like it's breaching it as we speak, down to our original target, down to here, that would have been a 3 to 1. Okay, of course, only time will tell maybe the next 15, 20 minutes as to whether we get to this target down the bottom. But a very simple method, just using support and resistance, um, looking for ideal entries, ideal targets with relevant stop losses to trade data. That is, in fact, the catalyst that makes the move, but we use our technical levels for entry stops and targets. Hope it made a bit of sense. Uh, if you have any questions, always get in touch with us at lat.london. Um, if not, have a lovely weekend, take care of yourselves, and we'll see you next week. Bye for now.